We introduce, therefore, a mild acid such as acetic acid in the solution of sodium thiosulfate. This doesn't seem to be such a good idea. Is masking coming back? Experts say that. A Chicago television news crew reporting on a string of robberies ended up getting robbed themselves after they were accosted at gunpoint by three armed men wearing ski masks. Hawaiian Electric Industries surged as much as 43% in pre-market trading in New York after the utility released a statement. Their power lines were de-energized for more than six hours in Lahaina when the afternoon fire broke out on August 8th. Gates and other investors are betting Kaudama Systems can reduce carbon dioxide in the air by chopping down and burying trees. If only Uncle Sam would get on... Housing experts blame the shortage of low-cost housing on two primary factors, the cost of land and the expense of borrowing money to build. High lumber prices are a problem, too. In an interview published by the president's office on Sunday evening, Zelensky said that he would be willing to hold elections despite the ongoing martial law amid the war, so long as the US and EU bankroll the voting process, as in pay for it. You've read the headlines, you've seen the tweets, now get close and personal to the doom and squalor of downtown San Francisco. The tour will start at City Hall and continue through Mid Market, the Tenderloin, and Union Square. We will view the open air drug markets, the abandoned tech offices, the outposts of the nonprofit industrial complex, and the deserted department stores. Discover the policy choices that made America's wealthiest city the nation's innovative leader of housing, addiction, mental health, an unrepentant crime crisis. I mean, regular people, square joes, on their way to work, and they'll stop, hang out with me, try this drug for the first time, and then leave their life. Literally, not, not leave. From that moment on, they're just out here with us. Total walking distance, 1.5 miles. Sneakers advised. Renewable energy investment, record-breaking $358 billion in the first half of 2023. Solar was the key driver with a total of $239 billion invested in large and small-scale solar energy systems. Would a massive shade between Earth and the sun help slow climate change? Some of the most exotic solutions to climate change are the various forms of geoengineering. But a Hawaiian cosmologist has an even more far-out idea. Place a 372,000-mile-wide sunshade tethered to a captured asteroid between Earth and the Sun to reduce the amount of solar radiation reaching our planet by 1.7%. He readily admits that this concept would require millions of dollars investment in just preliminary engineering studies to see if it is real. <laughs> Hospitalizations for foreign objects in rectums are on the rise. Researchers found an increase in hospital visits for rectal foreign items, rising from 1.2 per 100,000 persons in 2012 to 1 1.9 in 2021. In April, the Visual Journal of Emergency Surgery reported that a man had to be rushed into emergency surgery after getting a can of deodorant stuck in his butt. We were keeping our eye on 1984. When the year came and the prophecy didn't, thoughtful Americans sang softly in praise of themselves. The roots of liberal democracy had held. Wherever else the terror had happened, we at least had not been visited by Orwellian nightmares. That if you are going to control any population for any length of time, you must have some measure of consent. And so you have to bring in an element of persuasion, an element of, of getting people to consent to what is happening to them. But we had forgotten that alongside Orwell's dark vision, there was another, slightly older, slightly less well-known, equally chilling vision. Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. Well, it seems to me that the the nature of the ultimate revolution with which we are now faced is precisely this, that we are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which uh, will enable the controlling oligarchy, who have always existed and presumably always will exist, uh, to 
get people actually to love their servitude. Contrary to common belief, even among the educated, Huxley and Orwell did not prophesy the same thing. Orwell warns we will be overcome by an extremely imposed oppression. But in Huxley's vision, no big brother is required to deprive people of their autonomy, maturity, and history. This is my bedroom. Um, as you probably notice, it's a pod. Inside uh, is pretty much just my bed. And then I've also been keeping uh, my clothes back here. I kind of have some storage back there and underneath. So it pretty much holds almost um, kind of all my possessions. Um, I do not own that much. It's a little small and it is probably not for people who are claustrophobic. Um, but what I kind of really enjoy about it is that I'm now paying about $508 a month in rent. Um, and that's after uh, considering the cost of construction. Um, so for me, it really has been working out. As he saw it, people will come to love their oppression, to adore the technologies that undo their capacities to think. About which I wrote uh, 30 years ago, a fable, The Brave New World, which is uh, essentially the account of a society making use of all the, the devices in order to standardize the population, to iron out the inconvenient human differences, uh, to create, uh, so to say, mass-produced uh, models of human beings arranged uh, in some kind of a scientific uh, caste system. What Orwell feared were those who would ban books. <laughs> Against a nationwide backdrop of book bans and censorship campaigns, Iowa educators are turning to ChatGPT to decide which titles should be removed from school library shelves. The resulting strategy involved compiling a master list of commonly challenged books, then utilizing AI software to supposedly provide textual analysis for each one. Flagged books were then removed from Mason City's 7th to 12th grade library collections. Titles included Alice Walker's The Color Purple and Buzz Bissinger's Friday Night Lights. Frankly, we have more important things to do than spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to protect kids from books, Mason City's Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction told Popular Science. What Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book, for there would be no one who wanted to read one. Americans read fewer books in 2021 than any of the past 30 years, according to Gallup's latest reading poll. Reading appears to be in decline as a favorite way for Americans to spend free time. The new data on reading reinforces that the popularity of reading is waning, with Americans reading three fewer books last year than they did five years ago and typically read for the past three decades. The decline is not because fewer Americans are reading at all, but because Americans who do read are reading fewer books. The decline is greatest among subgroups that tended to be more avid readers, particularly college graduates. Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information. Earlier this month, police in Kansas barged into the office of the Marion County Record. They grabbed computers, cell phones, and reporting materials, and raided a journalist's home. A significant update tonight as we follow through with our coverage of the raid on a Kansas newspaper. Our investigative unit has learned that law enforcement downloaded copies of the newspaper's computers and kept the data. Two copies of the items seized from Marion County record and the one law enforcement gave to the court, there are nine items listed. And the one law enforcement gave to the attorney, just eight. Marion police justified their raid by citing suspected identity theft when a reporter got hold of a local restaurant owner's driving record. The state website, Marion Police Chief Gideon Cody, accuses a record reporter of accessing illegally in his affidavit isn't the website she used, according to Kansas Department of Revenue. A day after the raid, 98-year-old Joan Meyer died. Her son blames her death on stress caused by the police incursion. The police get to control what information we are allowed to know about. Then where does that take us as a culture? White House censorship of social media violates First Amendment rights. 
On March 26, 2021, White House Digital Director Rob Flaherty emailed Facebook asking what sort of restrictions the social media company was going to put on the New York Post. I'm curious. NY Post is churning out articles every day about people dying. What is supposed to happen to that from a policy perspective? Does that article get a reduction? Labels? Passed in June, the Online News Act, or Bill C-18, requires companies like Meta and Alphabet to pay Canadian news businesses when their content ends up on digital news intermediary platforms. Before the bill was passed, Meta warned the government that the only way it could comply was to end news availability in Canada, effectively blocking Canadians' ability to post and view links to news sites. Many news companies warned the government that C-18 would devastate an already struggling industry. The Canadian government doubled down. Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we would be reduced to passivity and egoism. The pandemic shifted our collective existence so that now any difficult development compounds the relentless uncertainty and grief, especially for those who experience new crises firsthand instead of watching them unfold from afar. The crises won't stop coming. Radical acceptance is the key to coping. Orwell feared that the truth would be concealed from us. Trust and confidence in the mass media has been on the decline. In 2020, 60% of those polled told Gallup they had very little or no trust in the mass media. Back in the 70s, during the Watergate scandal, that figure was almost reversed. About 70% of Americans had confidence in the mass media. We're in this moment where people can really just go and seek out what they want to hear, and there are people who are more than willing to tell them what they want to hear. People, whatever we do, are seeing things so much through their own prism. If the president says, I never said that, and we put up the video of him saying that, the public who is on his side will still tell you he didn't say that. And insight from Texas Public Radio. A new study has made some surprising conclusions about how Republicans and Democrats are living in their own separate realities. The study found that people were more likely to rate a claim as true if it supports their political party. Will we ever share a common set of facts again? Huxley feared that the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Gang, 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 gang. gang. <sighs> mm, ice cream so good, gang gang. Anytime I accidentally happen upon a TikTok live, I feel like I am watching the world end. It's a new trend that has popped up on the internet over the past few months. Her robotic tone imitates something called an NPC, or non-playable character, in video games. Bunny hop, bunny hop, bunny hop. Ice cream yum yum yum. Ice cream yum yum yum. <laughs> Mommy, I'm hungry. Can I have a fruit snack? One second. Yo, Mary, if you interrupt me again, I'll... It's the latest evolution of virtual tipping on the internet, and it sits at the intersection of gaming culture and sex work. Gang gang. Yes, yes, yes. Gang gang. Gang gang. Mmm, ice cream's so good. Now, this is late stage societal collapse, people. Please, <laughs> let's go ahead and put this up. The next part up here on the screen. Pinky Doll's killing it right now. Uh, in terms of uh, the New York Times, what they say is she said she has made between two thousand and three thousand dollars per stream across all social media accounts accounts which include instagram and OnlyFans, and puts the number at some seven thousand dollars per day orwell feared that we would become a captive culture america has a free speech problem For all the tolerance and enlightenment modern society claims, Americans are losing hold of a fundamental right as citizens of a free country. The right to speak their minds and voice their opinions in public without fear of being shamed or shunned. This social silencing, this depluralizing of America, has been evident for years, but dealing with it stirs yet more fear. How has this happened? 
In large part, it's because the political left and right are caught in a destructive loop of condemnation and recrimination around cancel culture. Many on the left refuse to acknowledge that cancel culture exists at all, believing those who complain about it are offering cover for bigots to peddle hate speech. Many on the right, for all their braying about cancel culture, have embraced an even more extreme version of censoriousness as a bulwark against a rapidly changing society. But the old lesson of think before you speak has given way to the new lesson of speak at your peril. Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture, preoccupied with some equivalent of the feelies, the orgy-porgy, and the centrifugal bumble puppy. It's a new thing. It's a fun thing. It's the swing wing. It's a what? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. We got that. I guess I'm staying. <laughs> As Huxley remarked in Brave New World Revisited, the civil libertarians and rationalists who were ever on the alert to oppose tyranny failed to take into account man's most infinite appetite for distractions. Mmm, ice cream's so good. Mmm, yes, yes, yes. Ice cream's so good. In short, Orwell feared that what we hate will ruin us. I decided to go into mental health because I actually wanted to help people. But then, here I am in my master's, and it turns out that the reason people are doing so bad is because they're having perfectly normal responses to their environment. That environment being poverty and exploitation. Yes, 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 yes. And it's like, I don't want to be a therapist because I'm supposed to tell this person that they're not having a perfectly normal response to their horrific environment. It's like if I teach them to cope in this unhealthy, toxic environment, that's just keeping the system as it is. See, I'm not doing too great. Huxley feared that what we love will ruin us. And I have noticed uh, with increasing dismay that uh, A number of the predictions, which were purely fantastic when I made them 30 years ago, uh, have come true or or seem in process of coming true. Techniques about which I talked seem to be here already, and that there seems to be a general movement uh, in the direction of this kind of ultimate revolution, this this method of control uh, by which uh, people can be made to enjoy a state of affairs which, by any decent standard, they ought not to enjoy. This, I mean, the enjoyment of uh, of servitude. Welcome to your future, a digitally interdependent, hyper-connected, networked world. Throw off the tethers of ordinary reality and join the digitized multitudes ruled by global e-governance. With your very own New World Citizen of the People's Federated Republic of the Great Democratic United Global States Incorporated chip card. Just one chip is now a key to every relevant database you are in on Earth. We're taking identification to a technocratic level beyond Aldous Huxley's wildest dreams and George Orwell's nightmares. One chip linked to your unique citizen number connects to all of your relevant societal business. 
including your passport, your driver's license, and all Federation-required licenses, titles, and registrations, your car, home, and medical insurance, all of your medical records, including your mandatory annual psychological evaluation, your DNA profile, and your prescriptions, your voter registration and history, and your bank account and digital universal basic income credits. But that's not all. Your blockchain-protected New World Citizenship also gives you a digital footprint everywhere you go on the web, from online news sources to all of your social media accounts. Authenticating you online to ensure a safe, peaceful, and secure society where no one can offend anyone else because no one can hide. Continuous, real-time, 24-7 tracking and tracing will ensure a truly peaceful, digital utopia for all. No more fear of identity theft or forgetting those pesky passwords, as your digital citizen mark will be biometrically verified through your fingerprints, iris scan, EEG, voice print, I'm sorry, Dave. and facial map. From Cairo to Rome to Ingolstadt to Paris to Washington to Estonia and Astana. From ocean to ocean to ocean to heck, all of the oceans. Being a digital resident offers you a new concept of freedom to be a global citizen under your borderless digital new world order. May be incompatible with faith and the actual definition of freedom. Databases wholly owned and operated by the People's Federated Republic of the Great Democratic United World States, Incorporated, and their subsidiaries. Your digital citizenship is legally binding, and data may be shared with third parties listed in subsection 187-C.2 without your express knowledge or consent. These terms and conditions are subject to change at any time, which is fine because they are 8,642 pages long, and we know no one is reading the fine print. Travel allowed only in pre-approved, trip-validated mega regions and not including core or reserved sustainable development zones as designated by the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. Online behaviors deemed negative or harmful are subject to UBI digital credit deduction without notice up to and including account termination. See user agreement for further details. Our smart grid network touches every corner of the globe. It's one digital new world. And your chip is your portal to it. So apply today. To authenticate and secure your digital citizenship because if you didn't do anything wrong you shouldn't have anything to hide and in this brave new world and in this brave new world you won't be able to